Talking about percents. Here's example one 30% of a class passed. 21 students did not pass. How many total students? Well, let's figure out, let's set up a little chart. When you don't know, tic tac toe. I think this is nice. And so let's say here, um, let's say passed, did not pass. Pass. Okay? Passed and not pass. Are you guys okay with that? And then you got your total. So the first column is going to be percents, and the second is going to be the actual number. So let's just go through our problem again and fill in the blanks here. Where does 30% go? Where does the 30 go? You have six choices here. Adeline? Um, it goes right next to past under yep, percent. Yeah, top left, right there. Okay, so where does the 21 go? Somebody else? <laughs> Where's the 21 go? Marin? It goes like two across from the number. Yep, right there. Good. Okay. Now that's all the numbers that they give us, but we can fill in some more numbers, can't we? Because what's the total percent? It has to be 100, right? So if 30 passed, what percent did not pass? 70. Good job. All right. So now we can figure out our missing our missing blank here. So how many total students? This is what where we want to put our question mark or we're var variable. So let's just put like N right there. Do you guys see what we have to do now? So yeah. now we can just, I love this because this sets it up for a nice fish method. Okay. All right. You guys need any? Where are we setting up? So in the storage room. Okay. No, no, no. No, because we're just doing YouTube. Right. So, so we'll set up. At like top of the stairs, but we'll kind of try to be out of the way. Um, I don't can think we need lighting. Oh, you're right. Yeah, we can do that. Can we do that? Yeah. Sorry. Um, I don't think we need any lighting, but um, uh, we don't need audio either. So let's just leave that. We don't need that. We just need the tripod and. Um, since you already have one stand, we, we can bring one. Cord? We can bring, bring one, one light. light we can bring one light just in case and the extension cord. And that's it. Cool. Thank you guys. Um, and that reminds me, I have to start recharging. See, I told you I'd be distracted. Sorry. I'm gonna start charging this. So sorry. So sorry. Oh, your black pen is still open. Oh, thank you. Sorry. So now we can fish it, right? So where are we fishing? Where are we starting? Where are we starting here, Adeline? 21. 21 times 100 divided by 70. Okay, that works. Um, the other thing you could do is, does 7 go into 21? So if 7 goes in three times, how many times does 70 go in? 0.3. So what's 100 times 0.3? Move the decimal over two places. 30. But you could have said 2100 divided by 70 is 30. So this is 30 students total. Okay. And then just kind of look back at your problem. See if it makes sense. 30% of the class passed. So about a third, right? A little under a third passed. 21 did not pass. Okay, so, so um, that means if there's 30 students, that means about nine students, well, nine students did not pass or did pass. And nine is almost a third of 30, right? And 30% is almost a third of- You broke it, you broke percent. the brain. Did I broke it? <laughs> <laughs> you, you understood it and then I, then I made you not understand it? Okay, 
Sometimes that happens. Um, so just see if it makes sense, okay? So picture these poor students that didn't pass. Yes. I think you divide 21 by 7 because you, you know that like. Yep. And yep, then yep. Kind of multiply, divide, and then yep. And then just kind of, and then you're going to end up with if you're dividing it by seven instead of seventy, then you're going to get three. Well, three isn't really anything. It's point three. So one hundred times point three is is thirty. Okay. Either way, just make sure it makes sense. All right, let's try another one. Let's try another one. Here we go. Let's say. Um, 40% of the leprechauns, I don't know how to spell this, so I'm going to guess, have never seen the pot of gold. Well, that's sad. Yeah. 480 leprechauns. We call them leps in our village. We call them leps instead of leprechauns because it's leprechauns is too hard to spell or say. Okay, four hundred eighty leps um, have seen it. Explanation point because that's exciting. Okay, how many have not seen it? How many? Have not seen it. What do you think? What do we do? What should we do first? Karen? What I did was divide 480 by 60. Okay. Why 60? I don't see a 60 on there. Because all I heard about is 40. Okay. So you got 40% of the leprechauns have never seen it, which means 60% have. Well, this tells you. 480 is the have, right? 480 is 60% of your total um, leprechauns, right? That's a lot of leprechauns. No, why did I say how many have seen it? Oh, I want to say how many have, oh yeah, have not seen it. Okay, so that will give you the total, but they're not asking for the total, right? And then what would you do after you divide by 60? Um, you could, but you just found how many total leprechauns there are. But it's asking for how many have not seen it. So what do you do there, Grace? Take the total and then well, you take how many have seen it and then subtract it yeah. from the total. So you could do two math problems, like what you guys just did, combined together. Or you could do one. When you don't know... Tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe. All right. So let's see here. So this is my percentage. This is my actual number of leprechauns, right? Okay. And so I've got seen, not seen, and then total. Okay. Let's go through the problem one at a time. Where does this 40 go? Adeline, where's the 40 go? Right next to not seen. Not okay. seen. So right, have, have never seen. Okay, so all right. And then where does the 480 go? Somebody else. Aaron? Above the 40. Above the 40 right there? So that's the percentage column. So the 400 have seen it. So this is the actual number. Yep, so there's the 480. Okay, now what else can we fill in? Yeah, Elijah. What is 60 above the total? Yep, so if 40% have not seen it, 60 have, and that gives us a total of 100, right? It's always a total of 100%. All right, anything else that we can uh, fill in? No, not yet, but what are we asking for? So now we can just go, how many have not seen it? We don't care about the total. That's what we did in the first problem we wanted to know the total but they want to know how many have not seen it so this is where our variable goes which means we don't have to worry about any of that we could just fish method that or what's you could fish method so that looks like a big math problem that's fine or what's the shortcut grace if you 
you take out the zeros from the 16 to 40? Yep. Six goes to 48, seven times. Eight, eight times. Eight times. Nice. And then, so four times eight. That was nice. It was. So this was just one math problem. So you, if you fish method, you still get the same thing. 480 times 40 is like 192 or something. And then divide it by six and you get 320. Okay, or the equivalent fraction method, 60 times eight equals 480. So 40 times eight is 320, okay? So this, Tic-tac-toe is a nice little data arranger. So this kind of does the, the thinking for you. Do I multiply? Do I divide? I don't know. I'm, leprechauns scare me and confuse me. I don't know what to do, okay? So don't worry about that. This is a dumb word problem. Get it out of English as fast as you can. This is a great way to organize your data. And it sets up your math problem. This is an automatic fish method maker okay all right should we try one more do our voices sound the same what because i realize that i'm talking in the same register as him it's an inverted. It's right here. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's kind of freaky. We kind of sound the same. I guess it makes sense. We're brothers. Whatever. All right. Here's example two. Twenty-seven. What's with all these mystical creatures? Twenty-seven of the forty-five elves. I guess so. Um, who asked, who, who worked in the toy factory, who worked in the toy factory, had to work the night shift. Oh, <laughs> damn. Hey, I don't know. They must have a rough boss, you know. Had to work the night shift. Okay, what percent of the elves had to work the night shift? So what percent had to work night shift? Or I'm going to say nights, okay? <laughs> that was almost cool. Was almost cool. cool. <laughs> So close. I've got, I've done plenty of cool tosses to make up for that. Whatever. All right. So what do we do? I just noticed something. Um, I noticed that of is multiplication. And so could be 27 times 40. You could, five. well, 27 of the 45 elves. No, uh -huh. but that's such a good idea. Normally, normally of means multiplication. So it's, this is more of 27 out of the 45 elves, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what does out of mean? It's like divide. Yeah, you could do that, all right? It's like 27 divided by 45, who worked? So equals uh, the night shift, so N or whatever. Hunter, what would you do? Well, I have an answer. Okay, what's your answer? 60%. All right, let's see if you're right. Okay, so if you guys try to math this right away, it might be confusing. So don't try to math it. Let's just try to um, either translate it like we started doing or do our tic-tac-toe. What do you want to do? Tic-tac-toe? Tic okay, so let's see here. What are the labels? We know that we know the columns, percent and actual number of elves, right? What's this top label, middle label, and bottom label? Adeline? Night shift. Who got so to night sleep, shift. Who got to sleep and total. Night shift and then not shift shift or sleepers, right? Not not night. And then total. Okay. Now, do we where does this 27 go? Where does that 45 go? Where does the 27 go? Oh. 
Marin? Yep, so right there. So 27 out of the 45. Where's the 45 go? Adeline? Uh, two under the 27. Yep, so the total, 45. Okay, so guess what? We could figure out that number, right? Because these two have to add up to 45. So if we just do that subtraction real quick, we get 18. Because 18 and 27 equals 45, okay? All right, so then it says who worked in the toy bag and had to work night shift. We got it. What percent had to work the night shift? So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for this. And actually, we're looking for P, the percent, but we'll just keep it N. So do you guys see our fish, where we need to draw the fish? I don't. Me neither. What do we do? We can put more numbers in. What numbers can we put in? A hunter? <laughs> yeah, we can put this 100% in there. We can always put that 100% in there. Now we've got this fish. Look at this. 100 times 27 divided by 45. That's a fat fish. That is a chubby fish. It could be a tall, one of those tall, skinny ones, you know? A sunfish? Yeah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> So 2,700 divided by 45, let's see, that would be 60. And that's right, so, so 60, so N equals 60. And that's what Hunter said, so 60%. Okay, the other thing you could have done is 27 out of the 45 L's worked the night shift. Do you know what 27 divided by 45 is? 0.6. And then just move the decimal over, and then it's 60%. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. I think I did it in the weirdest way possible. Okay, that just, sounds about right. I figured out that 27 and 45 both have 9 going into them. Uh huh. And then I figured out that 9 times 5 is 45, so it has to be the 100%. So I yep. 27 by 9 and doubled that number. Yep. And that was so you know what you did? You reduced that fraction. <laughs> oh. Not officially, but in your head, this is 3 fifths. Well, 3 fifths, well, we don't want 5, we want 100. So 5 times 5 in 100 is 20. So 3 times 20 is 60. Or 10, it'd be 6 tenths, which is 60%. So good job. All right, there's multiple ways to do all these problems. Um, you got to do what you the, have the most success with and do it the way you don't have the most success. Do it both ways. Make sure you know how to do math at least a couple ways because then you have something to check against. All right, um, we're going to do one more lesson. This is it for this lesson. You guys have questions on this? Okay. It's just word problems. I don't like word problems. I like math problems. You know? So get rid of the words as fast as you can and put, replace them with numbers and figures and things that are more comfortable. I mean, I w I've always wanted to be a math teacher, but I wasn't sure that I wanted to be a math teacher. But you know what I was sure of? After high school, I was like, I don't want to write papers ever again. I don't like writing papers. And so I was a math major. And lo and behold, I became a math teacher. I only had to write a few papers in college, but not as many as those silly English majors and people like that. No, thank you. All right, where's my notes? Oh yeah, on the floor. Okay, 82, here we go. Lesson 82, oh, this is so easy. We're gonna talk about the area of a circle. Really, all you have to remember is the area of a circle. Do you guys know how to find the area of a circle? A equals one. So that is actually the circumference. And we talked about that. Remember the circumference was the diameter 
times pi, because remember that diameter, you can fit about three of these, a little bit more than three of these around a circle. So it's pi times diameter. How many diameters fit around the circle? Pi diameters, okay? So that's circumference. Now area is a little different. Let's look at area. So here's how I'm gonna do area. Now area is measured in square units, right? And basically you have to figure out how many squares will fit inside of this circle. Well, squares don't fit inside of circles, right? In the middle they do. But you can fit some of them in there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just draw a big square around this circle, 23.1. Okay, so now what is this measurement again of a circle? Radius. Radius, okay, so that's radius. So what's this measurement? Radius. Radius, what's that one? Radius, radius. So these are all radiuses. So how do you find the area of this little top right square here? Remember how to find the area of a square? What is it, Adeline? Base times height. Base times height, R times R. Guess what this is? This is R squared. That's how you find the area of a square, right? Multiply the side times itself. Here's R squared, R squared, R squared. So the area of the square is how many R squareds are those? Four. Four R squareds. But are you really finding the area of the whole square? <laughs> No, let's trim off those corners. So let's cut, cut these off. So I'm going to cut these off. So I'm going to get rid of those corners. And guess what that cuts? So it's, now it's not 4 pi r squared anymore. Do you know what it is? No, it's not 4 r squared anymore. It's pi r squared. Oh. So there's a little bit less than four of these squares total because we got rid of the corners. We cut the corners off of your PB and J. Okay, so now we've got a nice little circle PB and J. All right, well, how much did that end up cutting off? Almost a whole square, right? Because it went from four r squared down to about 3.14 ish. Okay. So that's pi r squared. That's the area of a circle. That's all you need to know. So all you do is find the radius and square it, and then multiply by pi. Okay, and if it says multiply by pi, you can leave it in terms of pi, or if it says use 3.14, you have to multiply by 3.14-ish. So let's do a couple examples, and then we'll, and then we'll be done for the spring. Okay, um, let's see, let's find the area of this circle. Ready, go. So you can either give it to me in terms of pi, like something pi, or you can give it to me after you multiply by 3.14, which is pi, right? I'm gonna give you both answers, but Give me one. You should be able to do this in your head. You, I mean, you can do it on paper if you want, for sure. I always want you to do that. It's called the fish method. I don't know what you mean by cross multiply. Sorry. Sometimes we argue about the fish method. He's like, what? What, is, what does that even mean? I'm drawing a fish because I'm multiplying the cross products. I'm not cross multiplying. And then I'm dividing. How was that cross multiplied? You're trying a fish. It's non math people. It's tough when science teachers don't know math. I'm just kidding. He knows math. 
He just he just does it weird sometimes. But don't judge him. I'll do that. Anybody got an answer? Yeah. I was I managed to draw the square around the circle and then I yeah. <laughs> Are you wondering why I said you could probably do this in your head? Is it thirty one point five? Very close. I mean, yeah. Very close. You just you're just a decimal off. Well, that's Hunter, what'd you get? annoying. Isn't it just pi r squared? Yeah. So what's r? Grace, what do you got? 314. 314. So you're what you said 31.5, you meant. But you multiplied by 10 instead of 100. Look at this. Look, first step, this is what you should always do. You should always write down the formula. That way you're done. You don't have to remember it anymore. So write it down. What's R? 10. So what's 10? What's R squared? So this is pi times 100. So you could leave it like this, 100 pi square inches. But if you use 3.14, how do you multiply a decimal times 100? Yes, you could just move it two places to the right. So this is 100 times 3.14. So this goes two places to the right, 314 square inches. Okay, so you can leave it like this in terms of pi. So that's the most exact way to say that answer, 100 pi. Okay, but if you're trying to figure out how much whipped cream to, to fill this, to fill this pie container with or whatever, then you probably need an actual number. You need 314 square inches of whipped cream, which sounds delightful. Actually. I have a question. Why don't you just fill it with whipped cream? You could. 314 square inches worth. It's a lot of calories. That's all right. Um, you know, I burn like 100 calories an hour teaching. Especially uh, middle school, because I feel like I have to talk louder. So, yes, Hunter. You should fill that full of hot chocolate. Whoa. Now, easy there. What are you going to, are you going to drink that? You're just going to, are you going to use a spoon? I'm, I'm confused. First of all, I'm allergic to chocolate, so that sounds gross. But uh, I like the way, I like where your head's at. Just put an, another kind of ingredient in there. Yeah. So it's chocolate. Like half of hot chocolate, half with cream. Yeah, that's a possibility. Okay, you guys want to do one more, and then we'll then we'll call it good. Here we go. Um, let's find the area here. I meant to say find area. Find the area of this circle. Now this one you can't do in your head, but you guys know the other estimation for pi? There's two estimations. Pi is approximately 3.14, but it's also 22 sevenths. Okay, now here's what I like to do. Whenever the radius or the diameter is a multiple of seven, then I like using 22 sevenths. That's a multiple of seven. Because look what happens. Area equals pi r squared. So what's pi? 22 sevenths. And then four, uh, r squared is 49, right? Yeah. So I'm going to put 49 over 1. And then I'm going to take out my red pen. And make some noises. And make death. Look at that. That's nice. So that's 154. Square inches, and I'm done. You forgot the noises. So do you see why I use 22 sevenths instead of 3.14? Uh-huh. It worked out better. Easier. All right, that's all I got. Black math. Give me some math, and I'll give you some flack. Black math.